What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the second of my three end-of-year lists. Today, I'm going to be ranking all the new seasons of television that I watched in 2023. You guys voted that I should make this as a separate video from my movie ranking, and who am I to not give the fans what they want? Now, I did see a lot of good TV shows this year, but not a lot of them were from 2023. For example, The West Wing and The Queen's Gambit. Those are fantastic television series, but they don't count as 2023 releases. It's also important to note that not all seasons of television finish releasing within a given year. For example, one of the seasons that I'll talk about later in this video started airing at the end of 2022, and the release schedule for it bled over into 2023, so I count that as a 2023 release. Likewise, the Percy Jackson show that began streaming on Disney Plus recently. There are a few episodes out at the moment, but the show will not have completed its run until 2024, so I count that as a 2024 release. Does that make sense? Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. Kicking things off, I'm going to cheat a little bit and put two seasons in the exact same spot. At number 6, I have The Mandalorian Season 3 and Ahsoka, because in my opinion, these seasons epitomize everything wrong with the Star Wars franchise right now. Nothing about them feels genuine or like it came from a place of care. These seasons are engineered to elicit specific instant gratification responses from the audience by showing them a cool visual or character they like. Well, the stories they're telling are completely substanceless. Events happen with no cause and effect. Major character decisions have no consequences. Anything potentially interesting gets thrown away almost as quickly as it's introduced, and characters are actively regressed rather than developed. Grand Admiral Thrawn, one of the most intelligent, formidable characters in Star Wars, gets reduced to a fat, bumbling idiot who can't put one foot in front of the other without messing up his own battle strategies and having to start over again because he keeps failing. If I'm being completely honest, I'd probably put Ahsoka slightly lower than Mando Season 3, because it makes me more mad as a Star Wars fan, but they're both around the same level of quality or lack thereof. They're just meaningless corporate garbage, and together they make for my biggest waste of time this year. And at number 5, I have Murdoch Mysteries Season 16. I've talked about Murdoch briefly on this channel, but in case you didn't know, it's a Canadian production. My parents introduced me to this show a few years back, and I really enjoyed it. I think it was pretty good up until around season 13. After that point, it kind of started to go downhill. Season 15 was very low on my movie and TV show list last year, and while season 16 is a marginal improvement on the previous one, it's still not very good. There are a few moderately entertaining episodes here or there, but it doesn't amount to much. I'm not going to act like Murdoch Mysteries was ever some high art piece. It was aware of what it was and didn't try to be much more than that, but there were times when this show dared to tell compelling stories that had consequences. Characters were confronted with difficult choices, they grew and changed, but now everything is very static. The characters don't act outside of what their basic characterization is. For example, Llewellyn Watts is a goofy, quirky guy. That's just all he is now. He doesn't develop in any way, and the same goes for all the characters. It doesn't feel like anyone's heart is in it anymore, which is unfortunate, but I suppose it was inevitable. When a show goes on as long as this one does, it reaches a point where it has nowhere else to go, and I think Murdoch is at that point now. If the quality of season 17 so far is anything to go by, 
I think it's safe to say this series is in its death rows. At number 4, I have The Bosch Legacy Season 2. Funny thing about this, I started watching it with my parents as it was coming out, without having seen the first season or much of the seven season show that it is a sequel to. And despite that, I found myself getting strangely invested in the narrative. I wouldn't call this a great show by any means, I'd describe it as a dumb cop show crossed with a crime thriller. Some attempts at drama fall totally flat, a lot of the acting is pretty cheese, as is the dialogue, but there are some legitimately good twists in here, and when the characters they've built you up to hate finally get their comeuppance, it's immensely satisfying. All in all, despite having very little background knowledge on this show or the previous one, I had quite a bit of fun with it. At number 3, I have Star Wars Visions Volume 2. Similar to Volume 1, this series is difficult to place since it isn't a linear narrative and instead several independent stories occupying the same space. But even with that being said, Volume 2 manages to improve significantly on Volume 1 with more variety in the different animation styles and types of stories being told. Although none of these stories are connected to each other, I still find value in every single one of them, and this series is proof of the fact that there are still creative minds who are willing and capable of telling good stories in Star Wars. Coming in at number 2, I have The Bear Season 2. Oh man, do I wish I had more time to talk about this show. Unfortunately, I missed out on Season 1 when it came out last year, but I caught up on the series this year. And where do I even begin? It's simply a masterpiece. Every aspect of it is exquisitely done. The cinematography, editing, music choices, acting, dialogue, there isn't a weak link to be found. If you were to tell me a year ago that a show about a random dude taking over his brother's restaurant was this good, I wouldn't believe you. All of the characters in this show feel like real people and not robots reading off an AI generated script. They have realistic traits and character flaws which help us relate to and sympathize with them. Something hilarious is that in one night I went from watching episode 6 of The Bear Season 2, arguably one of the most well written pieces of media to have come out of 2023 and then watched episode 5 of Ahsoka immediately afterwards. I don't think you need me to tell you how much of a dramatic drop in quality that is. And at number 1, I have The Bad Batch Season 2. I actually rewatched this entire series before Christmas to confirm whether or not it was as good as I remembered, and for the most part, it still holds up extremely well. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's perfect. This is a weird show. You literally go from an episode that explores heavy topics like the deprivation of free will, war crimes, and unjust military occupations to an episode where the Bad Batch have to get their boss out of trouble with her gangster friend. But in my opinion, the great stuff far outweighs the weaker aspects of this show. It perfectly nails the world-building, heart, adventure, and thematic substance that I want from the Star Wars franchise. After being burned so badly by all the crappy live-action Star Wars shows this year, it was so refreshing to return to a series with actual good character writing. Where else in Star Wars right now can you find a villain who is threatening, competent, and actually succeeds in accomplishing their goals? Where else in Star Wars can you find a story about someone who is so emotionally distant that they come off as dispassionate toward their friends? only for them to develop into the most compassionate of them all, to a point where they are willing to sacrifice their life to save their found family. And where else in Star Wars can you find a story about a character who most of us would view as evil and yet still comes off sympathetic? Someone so solitary and self-destructive that they've dedicated themselves to a system they know despises everything about who and what they are because they have no other purpose 
in life, only changing their worldview once it becomes clear that the only purpose for their existence was to be disposed of like a piece of garbage. These are the reasons why I love The Bad Batch, and I want to thank Jennifer Corbett, Saul Ruiz, Matt McNivitz, Nathaniel Villanueva, and all the other countless creative minds responsible for making the show so frickin' good. Not Dave Filoni, who everyone gives credit to, despite the fact that he seemingly had little to no creative input on the development of the series. My only concern is that they could seriously f*** things up in Season 3. Based on their track record, I find that unlikely, but I suppose only time will tell. And that's pretty much it for my ranking of all the new seasons of television I watched in 2023. I didn't get around to watching many, but based on the ones I saw, I'd say it was a pretty mediocre year for TV, although there were a few hidden gems in there. What do you guys think of my list, though? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you have any recommendations for great TV shows this year that I missed out on? Just whatever your thoughts are. Please let me know them all in the comments below. And of course, as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.